Hey guys, welcome to another very exciting tutorial here at the PhotoshopTrainingChannel.com. My name is Jesus Ramirez and you can find me on Twitter at JR from PTC. In today's tutorial, we'll be learning what is perhaps the most important thing when it comes to compositing images together, and that is perspective. What I'm going to teach you today will probably make you a way better Photoshop user, your composites will look much more realistic, and you'll know exactly what types of images you'll need to complete a great composite. But before we go any further, I would like to announce that I was recently invited to become one of the admins at the Photoshop and Lightroom group on Facebook. The group is a large community of Photoshop users that share their work and their knowledge, and I would highly recommend you checking it out. Actually, today's composition comes from another group admin, Karen, who was nice enough to let us use her images for this tutorial. I noticed one of Karen's posts in the Photoshop and Lightroom group, it's this post here, and it's a post that she posted up of this image of a, a man walking in front of two women in this field with a, a sunset, and Karen asked people to give constructive criticism, and as you can see, people were giving their thoughts on proportion and different other things. Karen thought that resizing would solve the problem. And uh, I actually made a comment on here telling her to use the horizon line and vanishing points to, to set up the perspective. And I actually thought about while I wrote the comment that it might have been a little too confusing just explaining it in a couple lines. So I actually said that I would probably make a video on it. And right after I wrote it, I decided to make the video because I think this is something a lot of people will benefit from learning how to put images together from multiple sources to have a cohesive perspective and making things look right. So this is what this training video is all about. Perspective. You can get pretty much everything else right. Lighting, color, shadows, and extractions. But if the perspective is off, your viewer will know something is not right. They might not know exactly what it is, but they'll know something's wrong. And don't feel too bad if you're making these perspective mistakes. I've seen movie posters and advertisements that are just horrible when it comes to perspective. So even some pros have problems with putting together multiple images from different sources. But anyway, let's get started with this tutorial. This is Karen's image here. And as you can see, it's composed of this background group, which contains this field, a sun, house, uh, this brick pathway and this tree here on the side. And the other part of the composition is the people here, which is the man and the two women. Now, if you look at this image as a whole, you might be able to spot several things that don't look right to your eye, but the only thing we're going to focus on this tutorial is the perspective. And you'll see that just by fixing the perspective, things are just going to look so much better. So, how do we fix the perspective of this particular image or any other image? Well, Let's first talk about horizon lines and vanishing points. Now, this is a one-point perspective uh, illustration, and the vanishing point is here in the middle. And what that means is that all the lines in the image end up in this vanishing point. The vanishing point is located on the horizon line. So let me show you how that looks in a photo. So there's a photo here of a tunnel with barrels. All the lines in the image end up in the same vanishing point, and I actually overlaid it so that they both had the same vanishing point right there. So why do we need to know that? Well, maybe we're working with a composition and we want to duplicate an item within that image or bring in a, a separate item and we want to place it and make it seem as it belonged there. So uh, maybe you want to duplicate this box. So I made a duplicate of that box and I'm going to move that box around. And usually when people duplicate something or bring something in, they just move it around and sort of guess where things go and say, oh, I want this item here. And if you just do that, things are not going to line up. For example, here, we can clearly see that this item doesn't belong here. The perspective is all off. So the vanishing point is here, yet this item's vanishing point is pointing to some other vanishing point way off here. So what do we do to make sure that things line up in a composition. Well, first you have to determine your vanishing point and your horizon line. In this particular illustration, we already know where those are. The horizon line is this black line going across, and the vanishing point is this red circle here. Now that we have that determined, we can use the pivot point. When you press Control T to transform, you'll have a bounding box around your layer, and this middle 
item here, the pivot point, you can click and drag that around. You can click and drag it over to the horizon line and ideally the vanishing point. So I'm just going to click that and put it in the vanishing point. Now, if I scale by holding Alt and Shift, that's Option and Shift on the Mac, you'll see that I'm going to scale in perspective. So I can scale all the way and even make that cube come over here to the top. So now it seems like I have a cube here at the top and it's all in perspective. Now if I move that and bring it down, it's no longer in perspective. So I can move it to the left a little bit or to the right a little bit. If I bring it all the way out, it's no longer in perspective. So we gotta keep that into consideration that the item that we copy and paste or that we bring in from another image will have limitations based on the perspective of your image. So how does this relate to a, a real photograph? Well, we're going to go back into this photograph here, and I made a duplicate of the barrel. And we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to press Control T to transform, and I'm going to put the pivot point right on the vanishing point, which is somewhere around there. And I can hold Shift, Alt, Shift, and Option on the Mac to scale that out. And as you can see, it sort of looks like there's a, a barrel closer to us now. Or I can move that all the way to the other side, and this looks like there's like a barrel coming out of the wall there and it's all within perspective now I could also move this to the right a little bit and it still looks like it's in perspective simply because we've kept it all constrained to the vanishing point now all this is one point perspective where we have one vanishing point there's also two point perspective where we have two vanishing points so this is sort of like the corner of a street so maybe this is the building here sidewalk along the right sidewalk along the left and you're standing right in the middle taking a picture or we have it where you're taking a picture of a tall building right from the corner or where you're standing on top of a taller building taking a picture of a shorter building and this is what you would get there's also three point perspective where we have three vanishing points so we have a vanishing point here here and here. This is our horizon line of course. Now these are a little more complicated and for this tutorial we're going to keep things simple and we're going to be working with uh, one point perspective. Now another thing that you have to uh, take into consideration when you're going to composite images together is the altitude of the camera and whether the camera was pointing up or down. The easiest thing to determine is whether the camera was pointing up or down. In this particular image I have a guide it's going right across the horizon line. This means that uh, if this were a photograph, it would mean that when this picture was taken, the camera was pointing right at the horizon line. Now, if we were to move this up like so, it would mean that the camera was pointing down when this picture was taken. Maybe we were taking a picture of something on the ground because the center of the frame is here and the horizon line is up here. So if the horizon line is above the center of the frame, the camera was pointing down. If the horizon line is here, below the center of the frame, it means that the camera was pointing up. Maybe you were taking a picture of something in the sky, like an airplane or a building or something. So the horizon line would be at the bottom. So now that we know these things, we can go back into Karen's composition and we can determine how we're going to fix this. So let's first start with the man. I have the man file here, which is this man walking down this uh, dirt path. And we have to determine where the horizon line is and the vanishing point. So you might be thinking, well, maybe this is the horizon line here, or maybe up here somewhere, like where this fence starts. But, you know, that's just guessing. All we know for sure that this is the center of the frame. And just by looking at the image, you can sort of tell that the camera was pointing down when the picture was shot, which means that the horizon line is somewhere on this top half of the image. The question is where? Well, let's look at the uh, clues that the image gives. There's straight lines going here on this bench and this fence that sort of indicate that the vanishing point is somewhere out here. So what we can do is we can go to Image, Canvas Size, and push the anchor to the left so we have more space on the right. I'm going to just add a zero to that and press OK. And that's going to give us all this white space here to the right. And I can come back in and I'm going to grab my line tool. And I'm just going to change the color to red just so we can see what we're doing. And I'm going to just draw a line from here all the way to the right. 
I'm just going to try to keep that in line so maybe make sure I get it right somewhere around there and I'm just trying to make sure that the line that I drew is right on that bench right on that line and I can see there's another line down here and again I'll try to do the same thing I'll try to keep it right on it so maybe there and I can already tell that the banishing point is going to be somewhere around here so you'll see that when I bring this over to the bottom of the bench it's going to line up perfectly so yeah that's more or less where our vanishing point is it's like right below the edge of the frame so just to make things easy on us we'll just say that the horizon line is right on the edge of the frame so how does that relate to this image well let's make it easy on us and let's just uh, create a marquee from the top of the hat to the top of the frame and we'll just see how this relates to the picture well so that's the same distance between the top of the hat and his shin so when we come here to this image we'll just draw a marquee top of the hat to the chin and move that up this is probably not the best way of doing it but it's certainly the fastest um, and I'm just gonna draw a line right up here so that's where the horizon that's where his horizon line is now where is the horizon line on this uh, on this background image well it's sort of hard to tell there's no real lines and this path does, is not part of the original image so we really don't have any lines uh, that tell us and in the house it's not part of the original e image either so we really don't know where the vanishing point is and it'll probably be around here somewhere and what we do know is that the horizon line is somewhere around this line here actually represented by the grass and the trees so we know where the horizon line is and it's somewhere around there so that's a good thing if I bring the picture back you'll see now why this looks wrong to your eye when you look at it the horizon line for the man is up here yet the horizon line for the background is down here now there's two ways of fixing that you can either and actually I'm just gonna I'm gonna put this line in the man group you can either bring the man down and match the horizon line like so or you could bring the background up so let's do that let's bring the background up so I'm gonna bring the background up right there and actually I'm gonna turn off the women group just so we can focus on this man and notice that as soon as I did that things are looking much much better I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna uh, open up my windows history panel just so we can see just so we can see how we started so this is how we started here in the beginning it sort of looks like he's floating and you know he really doesn't look like he belongs but then once we fix the perspective although there's all this empty space here at the bottom he actually looks like he belongs now so that's why perspective and horizons and vanishing points are so important they help us create believable compositions so again this tutorial is not about you know creating shadows and grass and all of that so I'm not gonna worry too much about that however I am gonna create uh, just fill out that space here at the bottom just so it doesn't bother us while we're working with uh, perspective so I'm just gonna make a selection there click on the background press control J command J on the Mac to duplicate just the grass press control T to transform command T in the Mac I'm gonna hold shift and alt and I'm just gonna scale that out and I'm gonna bring it down and put it around here somewhere and then maybe bring this down and I know this is not perfect and you know it, it's not the best way of doing it but I just wanted to fill out that background so it wasn't distracting while we were working with perspective so what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna hide the line that determines where his horizon line is so let me turn that off okay now let's worry about the women so we have the women here where is their horizon line well let's look at their original photo and their original photo has no real lines that tell us where the horizon line might be we can probably get a clue by following this line maybe this one but it, it it's not gonna be exact but what we do know is that if we put a line right in the middle of the frame we can tell that whoever shot this picture was looking down which means that the horizon line is gonna be on this top half and just by looking at the image I can pretty much guess that the horizon line is somewhere above her uh, elbow and somewhere below uh, below this line here 
and that's just an educated guess. So why don't we split the difference and the horizon line would probably be around where her nose or her mouth is. So let's just use that as reference. And yeah, sometimes you won't be able to tell right away, but you can make educated guesses like I just did. And things are going to just look so much better than not putting any thought into it at all. So I'm just going to uh, grab this group and I'm just going to go up down to the horizon line right about there. See, and just by moving her up like that and matching the horizons, these ladies look more like they belong in this image. The only problem we have now is scale. This man is closer to us, so he should be bigger than these ladies. So I'm going to press Control T to transform, and I'm going to scale from the horizon line. So I'm going to move the pivot point over to the horizon line here. I'm going to hold Alt, Shift, and I'm just going to scale them down a little bit like so and then I'm gonna press enter so now everything looks into perspective if we wanted to increase or decrease the size of this man we would do the same thing control T command T to transform move the pivot point over to the horizon line hold alt and shift option and shift on the Mac and scale him in if he's getting closer to us or scale it down if he's getting closer to the house so I'm just gonna put him here for now and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go into Window, History, I'm going to create a new snapshot, and this is the original image, and this is the image that we're working with now. Now, one of the problems that you might see is that in this image, we don't have much of the sky, which is what made the other image great. So what we can do is we can select all the groups and just move them down until we get enough of the sky. And I can press Control T on demand, press OK, and scale from the horizon line. Press Control Zero to get the bird's eye view, and I can see the entire bounding box and scale them in just a little bit, maybe like right there, and zoom in. Now, assuming that I wanted to use this image of this man and I wanted to have everything in perspective this is where I need to have them. I can move them to the left and to the right, but if I'm going to make him any bigger, his feet are going to go out of the frame. I can't move him up because he no longer will be in perspective and it'll look like he's floating again. So I'm just going to go into uh, Window, History, create a new snapshot. So this is how we had it before. So we have it now. We have more of the sky. Now, if you want an image that has a man standing right about this point uh, and his hat is right where the sun is, you have to take a new picture if you're the one who took the original picture or find a, a different photograph. A photograph where the horizon line of the subject is right below his hip. That way you can composite that in and it doesn't look like he's floating. And the same thing for the women. You have to find a picture of the, of, of the women that the horizon line is somewhere along their knees or right above their knees just so they fit on this image. Now, if you can't find another image or you want to use these particular images for whatever reason on this exact composition, there's some things you can do, but you do have to cheat a little bit. And I'll show you what they are. First, let's work with this man. And I'm going to press Control T to transform. And what we want to do in this composition is keep the man's hat right under the sun. So we'll do that. We'll do that. We'll put the uh, pivot point right on his hat and we'll just scale him up like so. But we do have to hide his feet and almost anything that shows any perspective or anything that will give away that he does not belong in this composition. And I'm also going to move on to the, to the left a little bit. And also this line sort of tells you where the uh, this man's uh, vanishing point is and maybe the hat a little bit too. So what we need to do is press Control T and rotate him to the right a little bit to sort of make it seem like the vanishing point is on the horizon. So maybe move him to right even more and then press enter. And I'm going to move him to the left. All right. And now let's turn on the group for the women walking and I'm just going to move them down to right about there. And I'm going to take another snapshot. So this is the original image. This is the image that shows everybody's full body and they're in the right perspective. And this is the image where we had to cheat a little bit and move the man 
and uh, hide the man's feet and rotate him just to fool the eye and make it think that it's part of this perspective. And the women, we really didn't do much. We just brought them down. But even by doing this, you can see that they're now in scale. It doesn't look like they're floating anymore, even though they're the same size as in this image. Just by putting them in the right perspective, now they look like they belong. That's it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it and that you learned something new. I can guarantee you that after watching this tutorial, you'll never look at a movie poster or a magazine advertisement the same ever again. I'm sure you're going to spot tons of perspective mistakes. If you have any questions about this tutorial, feel free to leave your questions down below. Don't forget to click on the like button. And of course, don't forget to check out the Photoshop and Lightroom group on Facebook. And I would like to thank Karen for letting us use her composition. Once again, guys, thank you for watching, and I'll talk to you again next time.